Hey friends, it's Christy back with you on the My Favorite Things YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the Rochelle Ann Miller Crafty Companions stamp set. So I've stamped my images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Extreme Black Hybrid ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with this adorable raccoon artist, and for the lighter parts of him, I'm going to use C1, C3, and C5. I'm going to take the C5 first and lay in some shadows. I'm breaking him down into a couple different parts today because he is a little bit of a larger image, so I'm just working on his head first. So once I have all of the shadows laid in, I'm blending out with the C3, just making sure to go over the edge of the C5 and make sure everything is nice and smooth. And then I'll repeat that with the C1, just going right over the edge of the C3 and filling in the rest of that white space. Now, I don't believe that he is wearing a sweater or a shirt. I think it's just an apron string that is around his body. But I thought it might be fun to give him a little sweater because it would give me an opportunity to break up some of this gray and also add another pop of color on the card. So I decided to just skip down to the lower part of his body and then also color in his hands. So that would kind of give him a little long sleeve shirt. So I just repeated the same process, started with my C5, blended out with the C3, and then I'm gonna fill in with the C1. And then I'll move on to his tail. I'm gonna skip the stripe that is closest to his body and then do every other one with the same gray combo. And I'm just pulling that darker color in to the middle from both ends, and that's gonna help it look nice and round. And then I'll do the same with the C3. And then when I add that C1 in the center, it's going to just really look um, nice and fluffy there, kind of lift it off the page. For the darker gray sections, I took away the C1 and added in the C7. So that is going to be my darkest. So I'm going in now and laying in my shadows on his face once again and blending that out with the C5. So my darkest for the lightest area has now become my mid-tone. And I'm gonna bring that in toward his eyes as well. I always like to keep the lightest shade, the highlight color, um, right over the eyes because I don't want the eyes to get lost. That's where all the expression is. And if the eyes get too dark, it's really hard for the critters to look like they have a personality. So I always try to use my lightest shade over the eyes. And then I'm going to color in the rest of the stripes on his tail with this darker combo. Uh, just doing it in the same way that I did the other one except for the bottom ring. Because that one is so close to the body, the light wouldn't be able to hit it so it wouldn't have a highlight. So I just used the darkest two shades on that one, but I did use all three on the other two stripes. For the canvas, I wanted to do just a tiny bit of shading. So I went with some very pale browns. I used E40 and E41 and just did the rim and then a little bit of shading in the corners and uh, left the center white. And then for the wood, I'm going to use E23 and E25. The E25 I just laid in first, and I didn't lay it in perfectly because this is supposed to be wood and it should have a little bit of texture to it. And then I blended that out with the E23. And because those spaces were so thin, I thought two shades was just fine. I also decided to give him a little wooden paint palette so I used those same two shades, just a touch of the E25 on the outer rim, and then blended that out with the E23 and added in the E21 for my highlight shade. And I used that in the center and on the top where it's tipped toward the light. 
I use those markers for the paint brushes and then for the paint tubes and little container I use W00 and W1. And for the lid of the paint container I use W3 and W5. So now I'm ready to brighten things up by adding in a bunch of pops of color and I'm starting with this kind of hot pink combo. It's RV11, RV13, and RV14. I use the RV11 and RV13 for the raccoon's nose and the insides of his ears, and then used all three shades for the little dollop of paint on the palette, and also one of the marker tubes on the label. And then I'm going to start coloring in his actual art that he is painting. And I'm going to start in the top left corner of that little blob and color that with the pinks as well. And then I'll move on to my next combo, which is turquoise. And I'm using BG32, BG45, and BG49. And I'm going to color in the top half of his body. Like I mentioned, I wanted to give him a little sweater or long sleeve tee. And so I used the BG49 for my shadows, blended out with the BG45, and then used the BG32 for a mid-tone. I'm also going to do one of the little blobs of paint on the palette with those shades, and another section of his little piece of art. I'm going to go on the opposite end from the pink with these colors. Off screen, I added a tiny bit of shading to the apron with the W0 marker, and now I'm filling in the polka dots with the Y15 and just dotting that color in. I'm also going to color the apron yellow, so I'm going to add the Y15 down at the bottom, blend up with the Y13, and finish with the Y11. I'm going to do the little pencil that's tucked behind his ear with the Y15 and then continue adding in a little bit of color on his little artwork piece. Moving on to some greens, I'm using YG21, YG23, and YG25 to add another blob on his palette and also the tip of the paintbrush in his hand and then I'll add that to the painting as well. Just trying to blend in the transition of the yellow and the blue with that YG21. And then I also wanted to throw in some purple, so I used V12, V15, and V17. I'll color the last dollop on his palette and also the paintbrush that's tucked behind his ear, just the little tip. I'm going to do the label and the paint that is coming out of the paint tube that's down at the bottom. And I'll go back and do the label on the paint pot in yellow. And then I'm going to finish off the painting by bridging the gap between the pink and the turquoise with these shades. And once I'm finished with that, I will trim these images out with their matching dyes. For my background, I've cut down two pieces of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock, one with the Stitch Mini Scallop Rectangle Stacks and the other with that same die and then the Grassy Hills Dynamics across the top. For the main background piece, I'm going to grab the Rolling Clouds stencil and I'm going to blend on some Tumbled Glass Distress Oxide ink so that I can create a cloudy sky. So I'm just pressing that ink down hardest as I leave the stencil and then kind of lifting up with the pressure so I get a nice fade toward the top of each little section and then turning that stencil uh, each time so I get a different cloud formation. Once I'm done with that, I will smoosh a little bit of that ink onto my work surface Water that down just a bit and pick that up with a thin paintbrush so I can do some splatter detail on the background. And I use that thin paintbrush because I want to get really fine dots. I don't want it to be too distracting. I just want to add a little bit more texture and movement. And then I'm going to blend some Mode Lawn Distress Oxide ink onto the grassy panel. 
just covering that completely. And then to darken that up, I'm going to add some Lucky Clover at the top. I blended out the transition between these two shades, and then I'm going to do some splatter detail on this as well, just so that everything matches. While that is drying, I'm actually going to paint on another piece of Bristol, and I'm going to be recreating the painting that our raccoon was creating on the focal panel. So I'm starting with some picked raspberry. I just press that down onto an acrylic block because it's just easier to clean up quickly that way with a baby wipe. And I'm painting that on in the top left just as it occurs on the painting that I Copic colored. Then I'm moving on to yellow and I'm going to use mustard seed for that. I'm going to overlap the pink just a little bit and then blend out that transition and carry that color down toward the bottom of the card. For the green, I'm using mowed lawn so that it matches the focal panel. And I'm not taking that color all the way down to the bottom, just as it appears on the canvas in the image. For the blue, I'm going to use peacock feathers so it matches his turquoise sweater. And I'll once again just overlap a little bit of that green and even let that go into the yellow and the pink so I get a nice blend between colors. And then for the purple, I'm going to use Dusty Concord, and I will um, finish up that gap between the pink and the turquoise. I'll dry this with my heat gun, and then go over each of the colors with a second layer, just to make them a little bit more vibrant and have a little more texture in there. And then I'll dry it one more time and set this off to the side. I'll pop my focal panel into my Misty so I can stamp my sentiment. I'm doing that with Versifying Onyx Black ink because it lays really nicely over the Distress Oxides. So I'm using the sentiment that says, From My Hands to Yours, which fits perfectly on this die cut. And I did stamp that down twice to get a good impression. Then I'm popping my card base in my Misty so I can stamp on the inside. And I'm using some snow cone cardstock that I've scored and folded to a standard size card. So it's four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. And then on the inside, I'm doing the little card making bear with some paper crafting supplies. I trimmed down the painted background with the A2 Stitch Rectangle Stacks Set 2, so it trims off just the tiniest border. I'm going to glue that down to my card front and uh, just make sure that it's lined up nice and straight. I added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel, and I'm going to adhere that down toward the bottom right corner, just to have it a little bit offset. I thought that would be a fun look, um, kind of representing how the canvas is going to end up on the lower right hand side of the card. So it's almost as if the focal panel is a framed art piece as well. <laughs> so I'm going to adhere that canvas down first, just adding a little liquid glue to the back of that, making sure that I have that just where I want it. And I didn't color the grass in earlier because I wanted to make sure that I picked a color that was going to match where it ended up on my blended background. So I just grabbed a YG05 marker and colored that in quickly. And then I'm going to add my little artist raccoon. I'm going to add him so that the paintbrush that he's holding just overlaps that canvas slightly so it looks like he's in the middle of his masterpiece. And then I'll add the little tubes of paint and the pot of paint kind of scattered around the ground at his feet. To finish off the card, I added a scattering of sparkling clear sequins down the left hand side and then filled in the centers with some stardust stickles. So I will lift that up to the camera so you get a closer look at all of the detail and give you another peek at the inside. I hope you guys enjoyed the June edition of Christy Gets Crafty with My Favorite Things. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. I love chatting with you guys. And subscribe to My Favorite Things for more inspiring videos just like these here on screen. Bye bye